Good morning. Today is April 1st, April Fool's Day, and this is our morning meeting. Um, at the end of this video, I am going to have you either draw or record your voice, not your video, just your voice on this one, um, telling me about your ideas for April Fool's Day. If you think you're going to play a trick on somebody, or if you don't think you're going to play a trick on somebody, or what your ideas for tricks would be, just share what you think about April Fool's Day and playing tricks. And if you do, let me know what happens. Um, your April calendar, we usually talk about that when we get to the first day of the month. And uh, our school calendar is at school, and it doesn't come off the wall, so I can't bring it home. Um, but I am going to send in your packet of stuff to pick up on Friday uh, the April paper calendar, and we will do that together next week. Um, we don't have any birthdays in April. Isn't that strange? So we're just going to fill out the calendar, and we'll put in Easter and some of the other things. Not any of the things from our classroom, because it does look like we're going to be home doing this every day for the rest of April. I know. Long, long, long month. But, um, my dog's day, my, excuse me, my dog's birthday is today. Daisy is four years old and she is an April Fool's baby. Which, whenever we tell people that, they always go, oh, that explains a lot about her. Um, because she's kind of, she does all kinds of things that you wouldn't expect a St. Bernard to do. We'll see if she pops back in here. She was in here when I started the video and she just went downstairs. So um, if you heard thumping in the background, that was her running down the stairs. So we'll see if she comes back. All right. So let's go to our prayer eggs for today. We are going to pray for Sailor and Jordan. So I want to make sure we say... Uh, Hail Mary for each one of them and then of course a Hail Mary for our special intentions for today and then the morning offering which I know some of you know really well but a lot of you don't so I would ask mom and dad to help you look up a version of the morning offering so you can say it um, on Friday your parents will pick up a bunch of things that we're going to do for the rest of the school year or at least through April but they're also going to pick up your trapper keeper and because it has things in there we need so we can have class together but it also has your planner in there and your planner has prayers in it so you can find all of your prayers I think it has the Divine Mercy Chaplet in there as well so our special prayer intentions I want to pray for all of those affected by the coronavirus who are sick and suffering and lonely and for all of our workers our doctors and our nurses and our emts and our um, firefighters and our policemen and even in some parts of the world their armies and their national guards who are doing so much to try to help during this really difficult time to get supplies where they're needed and and help with the sick um, We'll also want to pray for all the souls in purgatory, for those who are um, thinking about abortions and that there will be an end to abortion if they want to do any abortions, and for an end to war and violence. Um, I'm not going to ask you to share your prayer intentions today, but make sure you think of a special prayer intention and the coronavirus prayer intentions and for Jordan and Sailor when you pray. Um, let's see, before we go to weather. I'm going to send an invite this morning to your parents about um, our first Zoom meeting. And that will be on Thursday afternoon. So hopefully I'll see as many of you as possible. And we can talk about having more Zoom meetings and what we want to do with those. From those people who have responded to the morning meeting um, for Tuesday, you guys said that you would really like to talk to one another. 
So I think that's what we're going to do at our first one. Now, I also got a suggestion for going on a walk together, which maybe down the road we can do if we all have access to a phone and you're allowed to walk with those. Um, and we can chat. And Liza suggested that we read Little House on the Prairie. And I'm not sure if she meant me read it to you guys in lessons or in the Zoom. So we're going to talk about that on Thursday as well. Um, and whether we're going to do it once a week or twice a week, I think we're going to try our town with it because there is, I can't think of any other way to do our town unless we're all talking together. It doesn't really work for me to do it in a video. So we'll see. Um, that's how I think we're going to have to make it work. So our weather chart for today, it is... April 1st, so 4 1. It's going to be a sunny day and a windy day. It's going to be 74 today, and this morning it started out at 51 or close to 51. Um, 7 09 was our sunset. Yesterday was 7 11, so the two minutes earlier the sun came up. 7 52, our sun will go down today, and yesterday was 7 51, so that's a minute later. Two minutes earlier makes three minutes. So I went ahead and added. Yesterday we had 11 hours, or 12 hours, not 11 hours, 12 hours and 59 minutes. Um, add three today, 13 hours and two minutes. So definitely starting to see a lot of gaining in hours and minutes there because that 12 hours went really fast. I know we missed part of it, you know, two weeks worth of marking it but still it went pretty quick we missed the first day of spring together too yeah i don't think it was the nicest day though if i remember correctly it was kind of cold and yucky and rainy that entire week that first week that we were out of school wasn't the most pleasant i'm glad this week is a lot nicer so we can go outside and do some things not together no play dates but you know you can take a walk ride your bikes play on the driveway, and get out of the house. So, um, let's see, that leaves our saint. Um, while the last couple weeks when we haven't been doing a morning meeting together, there have been some great, great, great saints. And I'm going to pick some of those and replace some of the April ones because I don't want to miss St. Patrick and St. Joseph and the one I picked for today. Um, St. Dismas, Dismas. The actual saint for today is St. Hugh of Grenoble. And he is from France and he was a bishop. It's a good story, but I don't want to miss this other one. So I'm going to kind of put him over on the side. If you're still really, really, really curious about him, you can look him up yourself. Hugh, H-U-G-H -H, of Grenoble, France and see about what he did. He was a good reformer. But I want to talk about St. Dismas the Good Thief. And if you look at the picture here, remember, Jesus was crucified, and then you always see two crosses, one on either side. And they were both thieves who, you know, thieves are people who steal things. So apparently at that time, that was punishable by crucifixion. I can't imagine what they stole. I don't think that it was probably some bread from the store, but it must have been pretty bad. But in the picture here, you see Jesus, and this is St. John from St. John's the Gospel, and then this is Dismas over here. You see they all have halos. Then, the other person that was crucified, the thief, we could call him the bad thief. He's not really called that, but, that, you know, he didn't go to heaven. His name was Justus, G-E-S-T-A-S, -E Justus. And he very much acted like one of the Pharisees. So the story of St. Dismas the Good Thief comes from the Gospel of Luke, and you actually hear the conversation between the two thieves and Jesus in that gospel. And it takes place after Jesus has carried his cross and he's been nailed to the cross 
and he has been left to die along with these two thieves on either side of him. The Pharisees and the Sadducees and all kinds of Jewish crowd have made fun of him and they have um, mocked him and they've kind of gone their own way knowing that he's going to die. And the Roman soldiers did also do a lot of that, made a lot of fun of him and mocked him and threw dice to see who got his cloak and all of those. Um, they would have hung around kind of off to the side for a while um, to make sure that the people on the crosses died. That was part of their job. And you know that they checked um, because they pierced his side with a lance to see if he had died and water and blood flew out, uh, flowed out because he was already dead. So they were off to the side. And of course, St. John was there. He stayed, the only apostle. And Mary, his mother, and the other Marys that he knew um, would have been there as well. And then these two thieves. And the first one to talk is this justice. And he mocks him. He chooses to mock Jesus. And he doesn't believe that he's the Messiah. And he says to him, ah, where is it? There it is. Um, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. Very similar to what the devil says to Jesus in the 40 days in the desert when he is fasting and preparing for his public ministry. Um, you know, prove yourself take yourself off this cross and save us as well. And in other words, I don't believe that you say who you are. And before Jesus could even respond, because Jesus never spoke to this man, the other thief who knew, obviously they knew each other pretty well, Dismas says to him, stop. We deserve to be here, but this man is innocent. Now, we have done something wrong, and this is our punishment. He has done nothing wrong. And then he goes on to show that he believes that Jesus is the Messiah, and he is God, and he is going to save the world and open the gates of heaven. Because he says to him, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Meaning, will you please bring me to heaven with you? And Jesus looks at him, and he says, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. And that, with those words, we know that Dismas, a bad person, a sinner, believed in Jesus, put all of his faith in him, asked Jesus to forgive him and bring him to heaven, and Jesus says yes. All right. Um, just a reminder before I end this video. Um, yesterday's morning meeting, I asked you to do a response and I heard from about half of you. Same half that I got homework from last Friday. So probably the same half that I know will come in talk to me on the Zoom meeting. But that means that there's about half of you that I'm not hearing much from. And if you are listening to this morning meeting, please remember that part of our class time is doing the seesaw lessons and responding. Part of our class time is doing your work at home and turning it in on Friday. I need to know, and that's how I can tell right now, that you are actually doing your work and you're actually involved in activities of learning that will help to get you ready for fourth grade. If you don't do anything, not only will you not be ready, but we may have to talk about consequences. And I'd hate to have to have Mr. Eckler and Ms. Bykirk and myself have to get a hold of your parents and talk to them about what's going on and whether or not you're actually doing work or people are sick at your home. So if you're well and your family is well, you should be doing work, not just messing around. However, if you're listening to this, you're probably not the people I need to talk to. I'm going to see what's going on on Thursday and see who all comes into our conversation because I think that's going to tell me some things. 
All righty. I'm going to log off of this and start on some other videos. Another grammar, a couple more reading ones, and a Divine Mercy Chaplet for the world that you can pray along with me.